what's happening. <laughs> Didn't quite expect to see this, did you? Well, this is what we're doing today. New heads. Huh. So today I'm going to show you guys how to uh, how I tune drums. Anyway, you can tune the drums however you like, but this is how I'm going to do it, and this is kind of one of the things that I do. Uh, and right now what I'm doing is trying to pull out a uh, extension cable for my head headphones because uh, I'd like to be able to monitor the audio and. I've gotten so used to having headphones on that uh, they're just, uh, well, they're kind of mandatory to me now. So, uh, oh, I got some good news too. I bought a new snare drum over the week when I was in San Diego. And uh, it's probably the most unique, unique snare drum that I think I've ever owned. It's in that it's got... Uh, 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 different bearing edges for the top and the bottom and it doesn't have any snare beds hey Jim and Craig what's happening I got the TV up here so um, I got my coffee here uh, and I've got reserves on coffee so I'm all good to go and I'm spilling coffee all over myself but that's okay because it just makes me smell better. <laughs> and I'm just coming over here with my new monitor and let's just see what happens. How's that sound? Oh yeah. Woohoo! Oh man. Sounds nice. So I'm using my overheads from the kit to uh, to stream this and uh, the reason why I'm using this table is because uh, it's going to be far faster for us to get the drum heads changed on this kit than, uh, than it would be for me to sit back there and change every head top and bottom on the kit and also there's some maintenance issues that I'd like to approach and get that figured out so that being said uh, I'm gonna go over here and detach the first uh, drum which would be the t actually I can I can start with the 16 I'll just go from from largest to smallest because I'm not dependent on it upon anything to tune the drums and I've also got a, uh, a tube of 3-in-1 oil which is what I'm going to end up using for the uh, to, to lube up the lugs because uh, you want to do that. My experience with lithium grease uh, using the white heavy grease is that over time it breaks down and it becomes goopy and gunky on the inside. Vaseline too. Oh man, uh, there's been many snare drums that I've opened up and looked at when I worked at a drum shop and it was just caked on with all this crud. And that crud was uh, all of the uh, uh, Vaseline that had been put in the lugs over the years. And I mean, it was it was pretty gross. So, uh, oh man, you guys are nice, thanks. Uh, you know, I was having drum hang withdrawals too. I was uh, down in San Diego um, for, the, uh, for the first part of the week and uh, you know, it, I was uh, down there. I wasn't playing any gigs, uh, but uh, I was just I was down there hanging with uh, with my wife Sarah, and she has a uh, uh, conference that she had to do for her work. And so I went down there with her, and you know it was it was cool to see people. And I like to think I went down to pick up that snare drum <laughs> because that's what ended up happening. And I'll, I'll tell you guys about that later. But anyway, so for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, drum off the kit and actually going to grab a towel too. So we have a towel that we can, you know, wipe things down. So let me go do that.
let's do this one. So, um, yes, I have uh, on the bottoms the old classic clears, and I have here my special left-handed drill that I use with my right hand. Okay, so, um, no, it's not really a left-handed drill. I just tell, I just tell, I just say that it is. I can use the, the high speed to back them out. heads are pretty new actually so I could probably hang on to them they're still uh, totally well maybe not <laughs> it, drum heads are like chewing gum you know they uh, they eventually start to uh, lose their flavor after a little bit all right so I've got it down to the shell and I could use some cleaner on it but really I just find sometimes just wiping it you know with a towel is good enough. It'll just get the crud and crap off of there with a microfiber towel that really grabs the dirt. So, um, not to get too cosmic with it. I just like to make sure it's, you know, somewhat clean. It's not like it leaves a puddle or anything. So, actually, I'm going to get some, uh, get some spray. Hang on. some funk on it it just doesn't want to come off without the towel so whenever you're cleaning your microfiber <laughs> yeah man so I, uh, I spray the towel so you don't end up spraying a bunch of crap on your drums and making a big mess I had to learn that the hard way <laughs> all right so yeah these are getting nice and clean this is just basic drum set maintenance 101 and when you've got them pulled apart like this you can check the shells for any sort of imperfections just run your finger across the shell some people at this point would get like a candle and use the you know the candle wax to go around the edge to help the shell tune up but I, I don't really feel the need to do that it's kind of a nice shell huh Koa in cherry wood, made by Bernie Stone. Okay, so this is wiped down, and the next thing that I want to do is just take a, a little bit of a three-in-one oil, and just and you can probably see it on the top right there. Let me just see if I can. You're just gonna dab it in there a little bit, just one little tiny droplet. That's all you need, just a little drop. You don't even really have to squeeze it too. It just will leach into it because you don't want to fill. You don't want it to fill up the the ins 
insert. Okay, those are nice and done, and we can do this side right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we're all done there. Let's get uh, some heads here going. I think I'll put the the bottom head on first. These are new in the bag. And when you get a new drum head, you hear that? A drum head's gonna have a note. It's gonna have sort of a a, 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 a tune that it wants to go by. Let me see here. This is gonna be the logo is gonna be like that. I like it. So yeah, the drum head is going to have uh, sort of a specific, you know, it's got somewhat of a note to it. So there we go. There's that one. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, when you do this, get them all threaded down in there uh, with a few good turns. And when you're putting it back in, don't use high speed because if you use high speed, it's going to go far too fast and you can really screw things up. You can break your shell. And I also recommend putting the slip uh, on these drills. They have a slip converter. So I, I like to take it down to as, as low a, a setting as it has and uh, use that. And, that's just kind of for insurance that it's not going to screw anything up. So, like say you're talking on the phone or blah, 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 and, and you forget about your, your drum head being tuned, your uh, Titan, you know, <laughs> like like you would do that, right? And it kind of torques it down to a fairly good torque. Matter of fact, you can use that to stretch the heads. That's okay. So from there, what I like to do is give it a press in the center, and you can feel it. There, it dropped a little in pitch. Is that graphite? No, Jim. That's a. Uh, it's just three in one oil. But you could use graphite. Uh, powdered graphite's good. That I would actually recommend that. So I'm gonna tune. I'm gonna turn one like a half a turn to detune it. And look, I'm going like one lug across from each other. So that ensures like sort of an evenness. And notice that I put my finger in the middle of the head. Because if I don't, I can't really hear the note at each nodal point. So I just back it out by smaller and smaller increments of turns. You don't need to, and then compress it <clears throat> like that. So it's still a little bit high. So you see how much of a turn I'm making here? I'm barely making it, you know, just like a, like a uh, one twelfth of a turn. Like if this were twelve, you know, this is three o'clock to me. I'm just going to turn it to two o'clock. And then give it a compress like that. That's getting kind of in a range. Now let me put the uh, rims mount back on here. And these are kind of tricky because uh, let's see where it's going to go. Yeah. Um, that would be like that. And then rims mount's going to be here. Oh, yeah. There we go, like that. And they have these grommets that you got to, well, you don't have to, but you can push them down over the inserts, and it tends to hold them 
These are the, the newer uh, type of rims mounts. They're the aluminum ones, and you can't find them anymore. They stopped making them. So uh, they could be. It could be said that they are made out of unobtainium. And you know, hey, dumbass, take the head out of the bag and put it on. <laughs> Once again. And these are the modern vintage. So these are a little more uh, off-white uh, than the uh, the you know the coated ones. And they look kind of cool, but they also have a little bit different sound to them. And I'm just trying them out here. The main, the main difference with these heads is that they're two plies of seven mil. And uh, seven mil uh, is the uh, thickness of the mylar. So it's seven mils thick, and whereas the head, it's two plies of that, and so the the heads that I normally use are it's a, a brand called the a line called the Super Two, which is uh, it's a five it's a ply of five mil and then apply a seven mil uh, underneath it. It's two ply. These are these are two ply heads. I like the sound of two plies on my drones. Single ply heads tend to sing a little more. So I'm just going to kind of go in easy here. heads these days don't crack anymore because they've got the glue thing figured out. They figured that out a long time ago. It used to be when you put heads on, you'd hear them all around the edges. And it, I think Aquarian must have built that into these because it's sort of like a pleasing sort of sound, you know, to if you're old and crusty like me. Give it a hit and see what it sounds like. Kind of boinky. I would use it like that if I had a big rack of toms. Like 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, or something like that. I'd put the 10 up high. a bit more. know this. This is what 40 years of, or probably 35 years of drum tweaking can teach you. It's not a bad sounding drum there, I, don't, I, I think. Let me go stick it on the kit and then we're going to get the 12.
like there's nothing quite like the sound of new heads. It's like a new piece of chewing gum, you know? It takes it a minute to kind of crack in and, you know, you get it loose, you know, after you play a little bit. And then when you start hitting them, all that flavor's there. Yeah. But after you play on them a little more, a little more, it becomes less and less flavor. And, uh, you know, that can happen, depending on the player, it can happen over the course of a night or it could take, you know, a month, depending on how hard someone hits their stuff. Mm. Okay, I'm going to back it out. Call me Ray, and you can call me Gay. Ooh, what we got there? That's not a wear spot, it's just the character of the wood. Ooh, I had some styrofoam there. <laughs> Done fast like a pit stop. I don't know about that. I'm kind of slow right now. If I were on somebody's crew, I'd probably get yelled at for talking. Hey, quit talking and start polishing. <laughs> oh, man. Here, I'll just leave this to where you guys can see it here. See me work. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't try to get them, like, obsessively clean. Because... You know, eventually they're going to get dirtied up a little bit. But, you know, these drums don't really leave this room. This is my studio kit. I'm actually going to go around the insides and make sure all these lugs are tight. But in the interest of time today, I'm not going to do that because I would rather be streaming it. So run your finger across the edge and make sure you don't feel any abrasions or pits or anything like that. And if you do feel anything rough like that, you can get a piece of sandpaper, some like 200 grit, and just, you know, buff it out. So, nothing bad there. Drip a little oil in there. Now there's another method you can use, but I don't want to do it in the house because it involves aerosol. so the oil doesn't come out. But let me show you this. So suppose you're holding your rim like this outside and you get a spray of, uh, of some like the graphite and like that go around it and then you can shake them like that and all the excess flies off and goes all over your driveway and then you gotta use you know 10 bags of cat litter to clean it up. Before your wife gets home, or your mom, or your husband, or whoever it is that would uh, be nonplussed about your newly created grease spots. <laughs> yeah. So once again, this is kind of like setting up a uh, guitar, Craig. I guess you could say. And also, in the interest of time, I'm, you, you, can, you say, well, why don't you wipe down the rims, dude? Because I don't feel like pulling all the screws out and then having to put them back in. I'm just trying to, you know, get through reheading this entire kit because we've only done two drums and it's uh, been half an hour. So, 
I just want to make sure that we get all these done. And we have time to play. Because playing is what I want to do. Let's turn that to slow. you go through the cycle of backing it out like this, you should do the, the compression. tuning my tops and bottoms is this. Uh, the, the top head I tune about a half step lower than the bottom head, so where there's a little bit of dissonance. If you tune a drum straight across both heads the same pitch, it's going to have, it's not a bland sound, but it's a very constant sound. It's like a boom, it's like a steady note. And in my experience, tuning drums like that, when you hit them, they get lost a little bit. So you want something in there to give it, you know, to have something that, that brings a bit of the uh, uh, edge out. Now, now tuning drums is, is a pretty interesting science because you've got, uh, you know, six nodal points here on this particular drum, and then you have another six on the bottom. So you have to get everything singing with itself on the top head, and then you have to do the same to the bottom head. Then you have to make them sing together. So that's a bit of a trick. And oh wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. A little bit of oil. You know, once again, I'm just putting a little small dab of oil right at the very top, and it kind of sucks it right down into the threads. There we go. When I get my logo, I get it to logo position. Why is that important? Yeah, for aesthetics. Meh. I love that word, meh. So, uh, anybody watching any uh, any good series on uh, HBO or anything like that? I've been watching. Uh, let's see, I just finished. 
the series, uh, what was that? Uh, I'm not okay with this. Oh my god, that's funny. That is some funny stuff. Uh, that's great. And I think that's on either Netflix or Amazon. Uh, right now I'm into The Outsider by uh, Stephen King. That's on HBO. Oh man, that's so good. Of course, anything Stephen King does is going to be awesome. He just, he's just the ultimate freaking horror writer. When I read The Stand years and years ago, that was a really cool book. Okay, tightening. everything to like finger tight sort of before I go and start you know hitting it with a with a torque and like that and the reason why is because you don't want anything that you know, to be uneven like if it if it's too loose on this side and you pull it down here it pulls everything like that and you can actually damage the head that way and once again Everything's kind of torqued really high. I'm going to press in the middle. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to start the descent. So I'm turning about a quarter turn on this right here. Don't need to go in huge steps. Here, this is a candidate for when I go across like that. If you go to tune a lug, detune a lug on this side of the drum, and if it just feels loose, like it just feels like it doesn't have that many more turns before it gets pulled out, then go to the one directly across from it, and that will uh, that will change things for you. This right here. This one's a little bit out. Another thing to remember is that when you tighten here, it's also going to pull this one and this one down uh, with the triple flange hoops. Not as much as if you had, say, die cast hoops, because there's no flex in a die cast hoop. It's just all straight metal. Like some of the Gretsch uh, drums, they'll, they'll have the, uh, the die casts on them, or any drum with a die cast hoop. Okay, so that's the top head sounding good now. Right, let's, I gotta compare here. about the same. So I'm going to bounce this one up just a bit. Now look at how much I turn each lug. I'm going to turn it like it, like that much. You know, once again, here, you can see it at the overhead, you know, the overhead cam right there. See that I did? I just bumped it. This one right here, this lug is a little bit, it's tight. It's tighter than all the others. I'm going to loosen it, and 
I'm going to pull up over here just a little bit. That's better. Let's go listen to the top head again. Top. Bang. Replaced your TV with a turntable years ago. Jim, I did that. I didn't watch TV for about 15 years, man. Those are nice. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this pitch for now. I'm going to grab another drum, and we're going to repeat the process. Friends repeat, baby. snare drum head is that, or actually I'm using fins on the toms, and uh, mediums on the, for the snare drum. Wow. 
flip her over to the bottom. Exciting stuff here, huh? <laughs> yes, it's very exciting. I don't like watching paint dry, but I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of the eighty twenty drummer. I like that guy. He's got some great points. Really smart, and I love the way his videos are done. He's got a good thing going on there. And I will always watch his videos. He's just really cool. Maybe one day I'll meet him. Maybe one day I'll get to be on his show. <laughs> Who knows? I'm doing a thing this weekend on Sunday. I'm going down to uh, Vancouver, Washington. And the bass player from, uh, well, he was he was the guy that was uh, filling in for Roland in, in Paul's band. Uh, his name's uh, Timmer Blakely. And Timmer's got this thing he does. It's a music class. It's kind of a two-hour clinic, and so it's talking about uh, the the big break. You know, like what was your what was your thing that got you like to where you were? What was your you know being in the right place at the right time? I think that's the 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 gist of it. So um, basically, I'm going to go down and and play drums on a cardboard box uh, because that's how. I kind of got the Paul gig was I was able to go to his house and rehearse uh, on cardboard boxes to do gigs and that's just what happened so That's exactly right, Jim. You need to tune an area down, then go a little further, tune up from that point. Yep, exactly. So you go down a little bit and then bring it up. That's a good point. Most of those are nice and uh, uh, done. Let me go ahead and tune it. I'm doing like a, about a quarter turn per. The reason why you don't have to do so many turns is because you've got on this drum, you've got eight points that it's pulling down from. So each point is going to make, you know, an incremental difference. And I, you know what? And I see what happens is I down and then I go up. I, it's just, it's become so natural that I, one of those involuntary movements. That I kind of forgot about. I think mine is more for testing the torque. And generally, I like my floor toms be a little bit lower pitched, but I've been watching a lot of Steve Smith stuff, and I love the tone he gets out of his floor toms. So I think I'm going to opt for a little higher tuning on this particular drum head. Here, let me find where I made it. Okay, let's get the other head out of the bag.
and I wrote us I wrote a review on that snare drum that I bought uh, it's on my website BillRayDrums.com and it's under uh, blog teens and uh, you can go there and read it if you don't want to watch me uh, sit here and go around this kit and put new heads on that's okay you know I totally get it but uh, go see that uh, snare drum review if you'd like. I think I did it justice. It's a really good sounding drum, man. I can't wait to play it. That's why I'm sort of chomping at the bit here to get this done. I was going to put a new front head on the kick drum, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to leave the front head for another day. I just want to get these toms reheaded, top and bottom. Yeah, there we go. For now. Um, okay? Yep. And let's put this on. So, you know, once again, I just get them in the neighborhood, or I just get, you know, make sure they turn freely. Here's a wrinkle. Um, if you have drum workshop drums, uh, and those are great drums, by the way, uh, that's what I always ask for when I'm on the road if I can't get stone custom. So the thing about DWs is this. If you're using DWs, they have a different type of lug. These are 1224 screws. That's the type of Thre you know, it's the thread pattern and the thread count, 12, 24. Well, it's a size 12, and then it's 24 thread. Uh, DW uses a size 10, which is a smaller rod, and it's 32. So it's a 1032. So the 1032 is uh, it's a finer thread count, so it, account, you know, it lets you tune more finely, which is a brilliant thing. I mean, I, I think the ultimate... Uh, hang on. Let me just zip these down. Jim, I uh, I talked to Bernie Stone the other day, and he's uh, he's he's doing good. He he injured his shoulder not too long ago, he, uh, separated his shoulder, and it put him out of work. It put him out of commission for a bit, so he's been on the injured list. Yeah. I want you to see something too. When I press down, I try to press as broadly as I can because if you're if you try to press down into a head. Uh, using the heel of your hand, you can put dents in the head. You can put divots, and you don't want that. So try to press as evenly as you can.
once again, the reason I'm putting my finger in the middle of the head like this is so, if you listen, if I hit it there, it, the whole thing resonates. If I put my finger lightly in the middle, don't press down, just leave it, just, you know, leave it there for a minute. from it. And sometimes it'll be the one next to it that's holding it up. It's this kind of a fun little physical game that you end up playing. Or physics game. When I was younger, I, I would sit there and chase a tone around a drum kit the whole time. Okay, so let's listen to the top pitch. Right there. So we wanna, that's a little high, but. not a bad interval. But let's make it better. And by making it better, I mean we're going to detune it a little bit more on the bottom. So it shouldn't take long here. There we go. Equal amounts on every one of them. Press in the middle. sound more floor Tommy but uh, let's tune it up just a bit on the top head we want to distribute that tone what I mean by that is top head down a little bit to, into the range of that and as far as a floor tom goes you remember what I said when you've got the uh, the, the floor the the two heads making the same tone roughly the sounds not going to have any teeth it's not going to have any like cut to it it's going to be one long tone so I like to turn it down, uh, I like to make the bottom head just a little bit, you know, a step up from there, a half step up from the other. All right, let's put this, let's put this guy all around here. Clap my mics down. Ooh, these are looking pretty now. tangled up in my own cord here. All right. <sighs> Last one. Thank you. 
put on. There's a, a top head. God, I got drum heads coming out of my freaking pores over here. And by pores, I mean other places. stuff but for right now I want to uh, just get moving I want to get on with it dang it ready to play play some of that uh, play with my new drum I gotta tell you about my new drum so the top head top bearing edge on that uh, it's got more of a, a like a 20 degree kind of folded down sort of thing like this, you know, the way that it came. But the bottom head, it's like, it's, it's, it's a shell. It's just straight down and it kind of kinks in just a little bit and it rides right on that bearing edge like that. So it's just one tiny sliver of metal that the bottom head rides against. It's not, it's not wide. So it's got two separate bearing edges on it and I find that incredibly interesting. I've never had a drum like that. And I think it's a great idea too because for playability, the top head having an edge, you know, a, a, a more of a shelf for a bearing edge is a lot better than uh, having the, uh, just the, the straight up and down shelf. Now I have a, a, a um, I have um, a, a Dunette titanium drum that's got both, it, it doesn't have a bearing edge at all, it, it's just seamed metal across the, the drum. So um, that's a really unique drum. Oh. Not supposed to be torquing right now, but I guess that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Woo! Are we torqued or what? Yeah, that sounds about right. The bigger your drum gets, the more, uh, the lower the pitch is going to end up. So, hi, yeah, yeah. Half step is a minor second. I think it was minor two. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I am completely tone deaf, you guys, so I'm not a, an authority on this. I just know how to make a drum sound decent. But, you know, I've uh, my knowledge of notes is very sadly limited. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I know all the places on the, on the scale, but I'm just my... I need severely... I just need basic ear training. You know, how do I get a reference pitch? That's the thing. It's like, what is A440? And it's hard for me to envision that because it, to me, it's a relative concept. I haven't found a way for somebody... I haven't found any way to, um, to have it put into my head like it's that's the... That's the color red. As 
much as I see rhythm as sketches and lines and uh, shapes and geometry, you would think that I'd be able to visualize tone as color and have a, you know different shades in mind. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. But I just need to uh, get some basic ear training. Somebody can show me how to do this. the notes you're going to get. This one's going across from it. Yeah. I'm just going to bump it up just a little bit higher than I normally would. I'm trying to get, I'm going for a, I'm going for a thing, man. Just adjust my heads per song? No. No, I, I don't feel the need to do that. Uh, you can make a set of drums sound good and sound in congruence with it itself, then uh, I think that's the main thing, is to make the drums sound good on their own and with themselves. Now here's the wrinkle. Once I get this drum put together, and everything back in order, then I've got to go play them all together and see how they fit, you know, by themselves because it's going to be a whole different ball of wax when I start hitting them together. You know, one of them may uh, be, uh, one of them might have, a, you know, a problem with the other. And what I mean by that is, is that sympathetic vibrations of, say, like when I hit the 16-inch floor tom, is it going to cause the 14-inch to resonate in such a way that it just creates extra noise for that, for everything else? And that's not what I want. That's not what anybody wants. So getting congruent with your with your tunings, that's a uh, that's a tricky thing to accomplish. But it can be done. Yep. Okay. Come here, you. I should put the, this thing on first. Yep. The larger you get, the, the more form-fitting these things become. They have to. So I just put the, the, uh, the insert right there in the... Uh, Make sure that fits, you know, the, the grommet. It's not required, but it's kind of good practice, you know, just to have it seat right. Okay, there we go. And let's put this puppy on here. Boom. Just like that. And once again, he wins the award. First, head on first, dumbass. Damn, I swear. See how? See what happens? All right. Okay. Damn, we've been at this for like over an hour now. I knew this was going to take a little while, doing the tops and the bottoms. I could do the tops in like 10 or 15 minutes. It's kind of funny, huh? But doing the bottoms, that's a whole other machine. And you got to get them all dialed into one another. Once again, you don't want to go in uh, screaming hot. 
top speed with a drill. Because if you do that, you can damage something. And if you're going to use a drill, I recommend setting the clutch to the loosest setting you can get. That is the main thing. Your tuning system is way advanced. It's, you know, it, as advanced as it might be, uh, I, I don't really think there's a way... Well, let me rephrase that. I think it just boils down to, you know, putting everything in congruence with itself. about this it takes it takes me a minute more because I'm I start start kind of asking myself what am I looking for here what sound is it Thinner bottom head is going to make the drums sing more. A thinner top head is going to also make it sing more. Like if I use the same weight on each drum, it's going to be really singing. But I would still tune it like a half step. I'd still tune the bottom head like a half step higher. resonates that's about right okay now let's put these on the kit there's that show you guys how to the proper way to cut a bass drum hole. First of all, you find on the kit where you want the hole to go. In this case, this head has a, uh, a felt strip along the back side. Can you see that? I can't see if you can see it. It's uh, kind of washed out looking. Yeah, that's better. See this felt strip right here? So what I want to do is I don't want to cut that felt strip because I want to take advantage of all the muffling here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the head right about here on this side. So I'm just going to come over from it. This is my secret weapon. Well, it's one of the secret weapons anyway. This is a, uh, 
It's a, a piece of thicker mylar. It's probably about, uh, oh, 20 mil, 15 mil thick. So it's gonna resonate with the head, but it's not going to completely, you know, kill the resonance. It will add a small amount of dampening, but not much. And what you do, instead of putting on the outside, which is gonna look kind of, you know, Intrusive and it just looks like something's there. That's okay. You can put it on the outside if you want it to look like a black hole, and, you know, like for the visual effect. I prefer to have it on the inside. So basically, you just kind of find where you want it to go. Now, let me talk to you about this. If you put it in the middle of the head like that, it's going to have all the air is going to push straight out of the head, so it's not going to give you the resonance of the front head. When the air column hits the front head, it's going to make it resonate more. So the farther toward the edge that you put it, uh, the more resonance you're going to get out of your kick drum. The farther towards the center you put it, it's going to damp, you know, it's going to take some of the resonance away. So I like to get it kind of close to the edge, uh, maybe about uh, four o'clock. Actually, it'd be the, the 8 o'clock position. And I go about maybe an inch from the outside. And you just apply it like you would a big sticker. See? Just like that. Now, this is the fun part. You take your uh, razor knife, a sharp razor knife. You don't ever want to use a dull knife on this because mylar, it, it's a pretty strong material and it'll tear. Uh, you know you can tear it so basically I just kind of plunge it through and then the the donut here that's on the inside is going to prevent it from uh, oh shit. Excuse me. it's gonna prevent it from you know having any maladies like the one I just put it through and you see how nice and clean that hole is now and it doesn't really take away from the aesthetics so you get now listen, you can still hear the tone in this head. So that being said, all that's done. Here's the patch from the center. You can use it as a drink coaster or what you, whatever you feel like doing with it. So that's there's that. And let me show you one final thing. Um, I thought I might use this on the hole cutting. But check out that blade right there. That's a hook blade. And you, we use that uh, when we were back in the day when we were recovering drums. You use it to cut the, the uh, material from the edge. And it laid up against it really nicely. And you could get a taper on it. So I thought I'd need that for the uh, putting the drum head on. But turns out I didn't. Or not cutting the hole for the head. So anyway, there's that. Uh, we got through that part with flying colors. Now let me uh, swing my stuff back around and get everything set up for uh, what we're going to do next. So this is uh, going to take me a second. Uh, let's see, go like that. what happens when you change something you're like okay how did how does it go did I get it right am I getting it back in the right way or what okay nope anyway let's see we'll just go back a little bit I got a fan up here I don't want to go bum, 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 bum. <laughs> but it kind of suck okay uh let's see let me go over here this camera happening. Oh, let me swing these around. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Woo, those are hot.
Oh yeah. Hello. All right. <laughs> Let me get this. I'll have the maid clean up that mess. Ugh. And by the maid, I mean me. All right, we're back in the saddle again. Oh, yeah. Put the cow, put the cowbell back. Put the cowbell back on the holder. Oh yeah, that couch is going away pretty soon, Craig. It's a, uh, it's it's served its purpose. Now the drums look all different. Let's see, where is it? They're, they're off-white now, and it's sort of changed the whole vibe of the kit. Now, I have pictures of the snare drum up on my site, and I'm just going to play a little bit. This is the new snare drum. It's a, it's a Oriolo uh, Copper uh, 6x14 with the two separate different kinds of bearing edges. And check this puppy out. Okay, so you get two treats for the ears today. This snare drum and uh, the toms, which are surprising, they sound surprisingly good. I could use this one a little bit higher. I'll pitch it up later. But all that tone, you hear that tone that they have now? Uh, let me turn this off. Just got tone for days. I mean, and so here's, here's another thing about tuning drums. Let me go get something real quick, hold on. So another thing about tuning drums is this. When you've got cymbals crashing and guitars slamming together, let me do this, hold on. When you get this. You see, that's going to cover up a lot of that uh, resonance so the drums gonna end up having tone but it's going to uh, you know the the mix of the kit is going to make it sound you know everything distributed and and fitting together nicely I have not found the note this snare drum likes yet I think I thought I found it 
but let's uh, let's play with the tuning a little bit on this and see where we get it. Now I want you to uh, check something out. When when this drum, when one of these notes, when everything's in congruence with each other, listen. You hear that overtone? Check this out. I cranked it right out of there. I tuned it out rather than tape it, you know, using a strip of tape or something. I I was able to tune it out of there. So that's how you get a good drum sound is you have to with anything it takes practice and it takes experimentation. This is uh it's a very frustrating and arduous process uh the act of tuning drums. I can tell you that from experience. Um, it's why I wear a hat because I don't have much hair anymore and it's from tuning drums tearing my hair out I tore all the hair out of my head. No, actually what happened it leaked down to my back <laughs> I used to have long long hair, but it, the one day my hair says, you know it looked and is I could almost hear it talking to itself on the top of my head Hey look down there. There's a whole freaking, you know huge all that great land down there you could spread out and it's out of the sun and you're not going to get baked and you know uh, so there's actually like a, a you can see it on my neck when it grows out it's like the trail of hair that <laughs> it leaked down my back <laughs> to my back <laughs> okay enough of that craziness okay uh, so this is getting this snare drum it's got man it's got freaking moxie it's got some character Check this out. When I kick the, when I kick the uh, kick drum, listen. You hear the whole kit resonate, and it's got this hmm hmm like that. Didn't realize I was overdriving you guys there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> you shaved my back for me, would you, big? Would you, sailor? Oh, I'll take you up on that one, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, let me fix my front camera. Hold on. Because it's like out of the picture there. Let me fix that.
Much better. Yes. Okay, three. This little <laughs> um, skewed. Hold on. Excuse me. I'm skewed. There, that's better. All right. Well, so, uh, yeah. Just trying to stay out of the coronavirus, right? <laughs> oh, boy. How about that stuff? Yeah. It's a crazy, crazy thing. So, uh, I'm going to go back into some uh, Rick's Licks here. And let's work on some Rick's Licks. Let's go back and revisit that first page that uh, was screwing me up like nobody's business. So, I'm going to go back here and uh, let me first off find the metronome. I'm going to use my metronome. And uh, I'm going to play number six. No, number five. I'm going to play number five. And remember, that's that grouping of five, five, seven, seven uh, over the sextuplets in four, four. So let's see what happens with this. I don't, shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that's getting there. Took me a minute to get into it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it you know, that wasn't so bad. It's better than I thought it was going to be. So there's that. Okay, and I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to work on that tomorrow more. And, uh, let's see, the Oakland Stroke. i got to give that one a go here. That That's a tricky groove, man. Uh, let me go practice that for a minute here.
something I'm not quite getting in the back end of that, and I'm going to put it together. I'm going to have it together. But you know what the thing is, is that I've got new sounds under my ears, and as with anything, it takes my ears a bit to get used to the new sounds. And the snare drum, this new snare drum, has a very unique character that I can't quite put my finger on. But sounds great. It's it's a very, uh, very fat sounding drum. I mean, this thing just resonates. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I like it. Listen to that low note it's got. I mean, that's just crazy. That, I've never heard a drum have that much bottom end to it. And uh, this this drum, oh no, stop. Now you come back. <laughs> um, what's going on here? Uh, I've been missing this. Yeah, I've been missing it too, man. You have no idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the new snare is it's it's sounding great. It's just a different animal altogether. I need to get my my ear accustomed to it. It seems like it wants to be tuned downwards more, like it's a deeper sounding drum. I did a session one time at Orbit Audio here in Seattle. Uh, there's a producer in town, uh, studio owner uh, Joe Reinecke. He owns Orbit, and I did some recording for him a while back. And uh, man what a uh, he he just had his concept was just tune it all the way down as deep as you can get it you know to where it's flopping just <laughs> just a you know that's what he wanted and it was really interesting to play that drum because uh coming up with uh you know drum parts on a drum that's tuned that low i'm not used to i don't hear a snare drum that low usually but it was interesting. It was in, it was definitely an interesting uh, session, and I know the tune that we did was kind of cool too. So um, this drum would be a contender for that low tuning vibe, I think. But I I'm not really a low tuning kind of player, so I'm gonna try torquing it up just a little more and seeing where it goes. But first, coffee. Another thing that happens when you get new heads on the kit is that your rims get a little higher. <laughs> and the reason why is because uh, when the rims, you know, when you put new heads on, they're not stretched out. So the rims tend to sit a little higher on your drums. And that takes a little getting used to as well. Mm. I like the tones. So uh, I think today uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hang it up at that because uh, that was a good long, you know, almost two hours worth of uh, uh, changing heads and talking about uh, drum uh, stuff, you know, cleaning and all that. So um, I'm going to be back tomorrow and I will have some practicing under my belt. <laughs> I might get my new glasses tomorrow. I hope. I had thought they would come in today. Hang on, let's see who's calling me. 
Oh, geez, this is Alaska Airlines. I got to catch this. Uh, hold on a sec. They're transferring my call. I had to come home early from San Diego, so I uh, I had to get a different uh, uh, flight, and I had to cancel my uh, original ticket coming home. And where's my dang microphone cover? Oh man! Ay ay ay! What you doing, Billy? You can't can't find the microphone cover. Oh no, this this. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you don't want to mess around with airlines, especially when it comes to uh, canceling flights and stuff, because you know you want to let them know what you're doing, because they'll be like, uh, "Mr. Ray, you're not on the plane." <laughs> so, anyways, uh, well, guys, I'm gonna bust out of here, and uh, I'm gonna practice tomorrow. Uh, Jim, Craig, Eddie. I missed you guys. I did. Whoever else is watching, you guys have been the, the, the loquacious ones here. Well, I will, uh, I appreciate Eddie. Welcome back, Dory, the awesome drummer. Thanks, man. That's kind of you to say. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I will catch you guys tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. And, uh, I'll have something uh, more worthwhile in the in the playing department 
together for you. So, uh, as always, you know, peace, love, chicken grease, and all that fun stuff. Uh, and I'll tell you more about my trip to San Diego uh, tomorrow when I come back. So, I appreciate you guys all hanging out with me. Like, you guys are, yeah, it's just a fun thing every day, man. I enjoy it. So, all right. Take care, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.